Tensions between major actors in the world are growing. The US and NATO have been targeting and attacking Russia and China more every day. These tensions, among others, could potentially lead to another great world war with a devastating outcome. But if a war did break out, how would space be used? Let's talk about some possible and probable outcomes of such a devastating event. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. There are endless ways outer space can be used in wars of the 21st century, but let's focus on some of the more probable ones. First, the US Space Force developed its first weapon, the Counter Communications System. It's essentially a satellite jammer. This anti satellite weapon has been prepared to be used in offensive ways. Developed nations depend on outer space just as much as the US does. If these space technologies, mainly satellites, were to be taken out, it could cause a lot of damage for that nation, especially for their military. Imagine most communications being wiped out, no GPS, limited communication of any sorts, weapon targeting systems are down, and much more. Taking out a nation's communication systems would be a significant blow to their daily operations and their military's defensive and offensive capabilities. Space could also be used in the domain of cyber warfare. We all depend on the cyber world just as much as we do outer space. General William Shelton, commander of the U.S. Air Force Space Command, has previously said, there's not an operation conducted anywhere at any level that is not somehow dependent on space and cyberspace. Some of the Pentagon's use of cyber warfare includes some shocking attacks. One use of cyber warfare includes triggering a nuclear plant meltdown by attacking its computer controlling operations. Another is by hacking computers to open a dam upstream from a heavily populated city. Even disabling air traffic control services and shutting down entire airports is part of the plan. These actions have all been approved by the Pentagon as legal, according to their Law of War manual, which was published in 2015. Another utilization of outer space includes ground-based laser weapons. In the forefront of this application is the U.S. Marine Corps. They've recently developed the Compact Laser Weapons System, or CLAWS. It's a directed energy weapon prototype aimed at shooting down drones. It's the first ground-based laser approved by the Pentagon for use by warfighters on the ground. This weapon is primarily developed to counter unmanned aerial vehicles, but can further be developed to target satellites, becoming an anti-satellite weapon. Furthermore, reports have stated that China has already developed ground-based missiles to take out low-orbit satellites, as well as ground-based lasers that can temporarily blind satellites. If this were to be used towards the U.S., the potential destruction could impact millions. In 2008, in Operation Burnt Frost, the U.S. conducted its own anti-satellite weapon test, launching a missile from the missile cruiser USS Lake Erie, destroying one of its own satellites. In 2019, India tested an anti-satellite weapon, taking out one of its own satellites. In 2021, Russia used one of their anti-satellite weapons to take out one of their own. Weapons used in space have already been developed. If a war were to break out, space would be an essential domain and target. These lasers won't only be ground-based. They are and will be placed on fighter jets, submarines, and everything else imaginable. For decades, there have been talks and proposed ideas of lasers in space. Just check out this short clip from Lockheed Martin from 2020. Imagine an aircraft equipped with a laser system with the capability to be able to neutralize a threat at the speed of a lightning strike, the precision of a surgical scalpel, with the magazine to deal with a swarm, and with the scalable effect to be able to address that threat 
providing an effect all the way the one end from simply deterring it for a short period of time all the way up to completely neutralizing and defeating that threat. Another potential threatening weapon is the EMP, an electromagnetic pulse. In 2013, Raytheon successfully tested its phaser gun, which uses a technique known as a high power microwave or HPM to knock drones out of the sky with a single pulse of energy. Boeing has successfully tested its EMP weapon, CHAMP, which stands for Counter Electronics High Power Microwave Advanced Missile Project. This animation shows a simulated weapon flying over selected targets, hitting them with high power radio wave bursts and defeating their electrical and data systems without causing injury or collateral damage. But it was no simulation Tuesday over the Utah Test and Training Range, where Boeing and the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory's Directed Energy Directorate successfully flew the first fully operational CHAMP weapon. We hit every target we wanted to, we prosecuted everyone. Today we made science fiction science fact. This video, recorded during an earlier test, shows what CHAMP is capable of. Watch the computer screens in this office as the directed energy hits the building. While the computers were knocked out, there is no structural damage. Fade to black. When that computer went out, uh, when we fired, it actually took out the cameras as well. We took out everything on that. It was fantastic. Just the growing competition between major actors in outer space is concerning. This month in July, Russia announced that it would be leaving the International Space Station in 2024 over the war in Ukraine. The small, tethered relationships between these major nuclear-powered, space-dependent nation-states are beginning to rupture. And in addition, again in this month of July, China's foreign ministry spokesperson, Zhao Lijian, said the U.S. is the main driver for weaponizing outer space. The U.S. is the main driver in turning outer space into a weapon and a battlefield. It has long pursued a strategy for dominance in space and openly defined outer space as a warfighting domain. The U.K. and South Korea recently announced plans to cooperate with the U.S. in militarizing space. India has made moves to show the world that they are taking space as more of a concern as part of their new national security frontier. New programs have been established linking their military branches to satellites in outer space. France has slowly been increasing its military budget, stating that they require improvements in their capabilities in cyber offense, outer space, and unmanned systems. With all of these signs, the world is becoming more militarized and outer space is being included more and more. These signs show that the world is leaning more towards militarization and war and away from stability and peace. Is this shocking to you? Should we be concerned? Let us know what you think in the comments. And if you want to get involved, reach out to us through our website, spaceforpeace.org. And now I'll leave you with the words from astronaut Edgar Mitchell, who warned about a war in space. If we have a war in space in the vicinity of the Earth, it will be the one and only. There will never be a second war in space. And let me tell you why. It only takes a simple calculation to determine this. And all aerospace engineers know what it is. It's been studied many times. You do not need but a few million pounds of matter in space, broken up into tiny pellets, one gram size, to make the near regions of space totally uninhabitable from the debris. Space is the most environmentally sensitive area we have around Earth. On the oceans, a beer can can sink to the bottom, be covered over with silt, and in a few generations, will return to the earth. It'll disintegrate. A piece of space junk, if it's in an orbit that doesn't intersect the atmosphere, will stay there forever. There is no way to clean it up. We explode a few pieces of equipment up there. Eight million pounds, that is the size of one Saturn Apollo launch vehicle, what I went to the moon on. 
you break up eight million pounds into one gram mass and just let it distribute throughout the first thousand kilometers of space and no spacecraft can survive in space more than a few days future generations will be precluded from using space at all and being able to get out to deep space it will be like swimming through a piranha filled river or running through a hail of bullets to get into outer space it doesn't seem sensible to me that in the first hundred years of using that environment presumably for our betterment we take decisions and commit acts that preclude all future generations from a proper use of that environment.